Our Heavenly Father, you've committed yourself to preserve and protect us from all harm according to your plan and your power. In this season of uncertainty and concern, we're bombarded with reports that give us facts that are alarming and seemingly unreal. We're surrounded by conversations full of worry and anxiety and hearts that are wavering in their hope. We seek your face because we know that there's no shadow of turning in you. You are the same God that escorted the Hebrew men through the furnace and gave Paul safe landing even in stormy seas and a shipwrecked boat. You are the God that brought the people of faith through every dire situation that has surfaced before and we know that you will prove to be that savior that can do it again. In the shadows of death we find comfort in your presence and your power. In Isaiah you promised us that when we go through troubled waters and fire you'd be with us. Well now we feel the humidity and the heat changing around us but we kneel before you because we understand that we don't have a heavenly father that gives empty promises but provides real salvation. Because of the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we stand assured that through him, we've been given victory at every level, both now and in the life to come. So in this moment, we ask that you would steady our hearts, give us the grace needed so that our faith and our hope do not waver. Place a hedge of protection around our minds, give peace to our minds. Let us remain calm and confident knowing that you are our light and you are our salvation so we have no reason to fear. Also, we ask that you would strengthen the families of those that have suffered loss. Provide them with the mercy needed to comfort them in this hour. Remind them daily through the calls, texts, and messages of their friends and loved ones that your heart is close to theirs and you will sustain them until their strength is regained. We understand that this is not a divine scare tactic, but a holy strategy to produce something in and through our lives that wouldn't have been produced in any other way. So we ask for your forgiveness in every area of our lives where we've been out of order, spaces where we've misprioritized our family relationships, our relationship with you, and our care for those around us that were overlooked and underconsidered. We ask for your forgiveness for every act of adultery and idolatry. Forgive us for giving our blessings a higher priority priority than our blesser. Forgive us for putting our marriages on the back burner of our lives so that we could marry our careers. Forgive us for forsaking communicating with our children because it wasn't convenient or fitting in our social agendas. Forgive us for mistreating employees to increase bottom lines. Forgive us for treating our churches like cash cows and not the house of prayer. Forgive us for hoarding our resources instead of helping those that were clearly in need. Forgive us for using your breath, your strength, your time, your body, your mind and your talents on our selfish and personal agendas. We're deeply sorry and we choose to repent and honor you. Provide us with your direction so that we don't waste whatever possibility you're placing in front of us. We surrender our hands and our hearts to you. You remind us that if your people who are called by your name, hallelujah, will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven. You would forgive their sins and heal their land. We know as the people of faith that the vaccine and remedy for this is not to be found in a lab. This healing must come from heaven and heaven is waiting on our repentance to release healing for this land. We choose to repent and now look toward heaven for your healing. Finally, Father, we thank you for this moment. We rest in the holy certainty that is going to work out for our good and your glory. We thank you for how you will use this to renovate the hearts of our families, the hearts of our churches, the hearts of our communities, our country and our world. We expect nothing less than to see your loving hands transform our lives to get realigned with your heart so that your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, believing it done, and the people of God said together, amen.